It was challenging for a few brokers, for sure. The landscape has definitely changed. I mean, we are all fighting for the same type of clientele, the new ones especially, because there's a lack of inventory. People don't know what to do. Hello, welcome to episode 187 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter, and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we are joined by returning guest, Jessica DeRee. Based in Montreal, Jessica last joined us in August of 2021, and since then, the real estate landscape has changed drastically. In her local market, she has seen an increase in rentals and has positioned herself to be better equipped to meet clients' needs. Throughout our conversation, Jessica shares how her marketing efforts have evolved, how she's educating clients through the changing market, and why she's using webinars to connect with leads on their time. But before we get on to the day's featured interview, the Smart Agents Magazine is available and is full of insights and strategies designed to help real estate agents grow their businesses. Inside, you will find interviews and advice from leading real estate professionals, marketing tips to flood your business with leads, and even swipe and deploy files full of practical tools to enhance your business. Subscribe now to receive your copy of the printed magazine each month and instantly get access to our online agent community and members-only templates. Click the link in the episode description or go to smartagents.com forward slash magazine. Also, if you enjoy this conversation, be sure to like and subscribe. The Smart Agents podcast streams on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube. And finally, if you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message of feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new stories to share. All right, let's get on to the day's featured interview with Jessica DeRee. If you're interested in hearing more from her, I've included several links in the episode description. So just getting started out, I'd love to have you reintroduce yourself to us a little bit and what you've been up to. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me. I believe last time we spoke, we were in the midst of COVID and all that sort of hustle and bustle of what to do with the the trying times that we were going through. So now we're here now in 2024 in the spring, and I would like to talk about what's currently going on right now and uh, up here in Montreal in the cold. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we're in Florida. We actually just had to like cut my grass because it was going crazy. It's nice and hot here already. But uh, it's funny you're talking about cutting your grass. And meanwhile, it's snowing here in March. <laughs> so <laughs> there's a big difference. <laughs> Right. Absolutely. Well, you know, going back just, you know, it's been several years since we spoke and really the last time we did speak, we were in the midst of uh, COVID and having to deal with, you know, uh, the real estate market really kind of changing and all the restrictions that were placed on showing homes and everything you could do. So I just want to, you know, kind of start off with, you know, how you you know came out of that and how things kind of changed market wise, you know, back when you know, the market really kind of took off during COVID. Yes. So it really took off. Interest rate was super low. So people were really diving into, we're seeing multiple offers everywhere. Um, the restrictions had let go. So people were now allowed to kind of enter the homes and kind of showcase them, but still there was still that demand, right? So it was quite hectic. And those were some of the best, you know, years of uh, our lives really to tackle on for our buyers and our sellers. It was, it was a really good time. What came afterwards is after the fact, right? So now that interest rates are kind of high <laughs> and uh, people are finding it hard, obviously harder to, to purchase. So they're the sellers right now currently are discovering that those prices no longer um, exist in terms of, you know, what, what happened at COVID. We can no longer get that price when four, five, six, seven offers were coming in or more, right? So now we're trying, we're seeing the sellers kind of being a little bit more understanding of what's going on. They haven't really gone down in that like really far <laughs> yet to really what the market would like to uh, obtain. But um, we still see in different price points, the same thing. We still see some multiple offers coming through for some of our buyers, um, depending on the price range. I would say about to 750000 that that we'll see some multiple offers because people are understanding for the buyer side too, prices are going to be as they are, and they are just going to have to adapt to the current um, conditions of the interest rate. So there are people that still want to buy, um, and they're and they're going into it. So all that being said, after the restrictions were la- laid off, I think people are also having that mindset of, oh, we, we want to tackle this now. We don't want to ever go back to a place like that before. <laughs> <laughs> so all this to say, and I can talk for very long, is that basically people are just wanting to 
get their feet wet and just jump right in. Right. So, you know, with all those people that were, um, you know, interested in selling their homes because they did see uh, the prices that they could get or, you know, and obviously there was people moving for various reasons. So you had, you know, buyers that maybe couldn't get into a home back then, but now they're dealing with the interest rates. Um, were, have you been able to stay in contact with a lot of those people that maybe didn't take advantage of those prices as sellers before? Yes. And so some of them obviously do have that, you know, Oh shoot, I missed my mark. I regret it. <laughs> so unfortunately, you know, there's a difficult difficult conversation to be had there. Um, we just have to adapt and try to see what's the best price that we can possibly get them in, in terms of, you know, the current reality that we're in. Obviously, they know that they're going to have to cut some sort of loss in in the end because they're not going to get that price that they were hoping for, but they're understanding now like this is the reality, this is what it is, and unfortunately now people are in the position where they have to sell. So when you're in that, you know, situation, you really just have to kind of adapt. And so we're here to really just um, give that knowledge out to the seller and make an informed decision as best as we can. Right. But yeah, we regret it. <laughs> yeah. And, and for you over that time, how did your, um, you know, your approach to, uh, you know, converting new leads or, you know, working with your sphere of influence, how has that changed over these past couple of years? It's funny because here in Canada, there's a lot of politics going on. I'm not going to get into it because no one likes to get into that conversation. <laughs> but a lot of people actually have been going down to your end of the world. So into Florida, um, into other places and, and so on. And even across Canada, they've been trying to get out of Quebec and, and leaving to other provinces for, for tax purposes or whatnot. And so um, my sphere of influence, you know, a lot of people have left the province or the country entirely. And also those who are still sticking around to try to buy, they're still here, but they're still uncertain of what is going on. Currently, there is a lack of inventory. Um, there's not much to play around with in terms of what their wants and needs are. And obviously the price really hasn't adapted to the current inflation situation. So it's either do we eat ramen noodles for the rest of our lives or do we just wait a, a bit and see what's going on? But I tell them as the more you wait, the more you're going to miss your mark. And it's just really finding that right, you know, home. And that's kind of what we're looking for. But there's more rentals now more than ever. So people are leaning more towards the rental just in order for them to wait. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, one of the things that we really uh, talked about the last time uh, you're with us is, you know, uh, selling that lifestyle around uh, your home or the property that you are looking to. And I have to imagine that that's still a very big, uh, you know, part of your presentation and how you work with clients uh, for those rentals as well. Yes, exactly. So in terms of lifestyle, if people are either going to buy or rent or even for that luxury clientele, people are still going to, if they're going to put quite a big dollar amount for their monthly rent, they're going to say, okay, well, I want to be, you know, around uh, certain types of uh, public transportation so they can get around easier. If they're not, if they're reduced down to one car, let's say, for example, um, if there's a building with amenities such as a pool gym so everyone's trying to consolidate all of their things into one so especially if you're going to pay a quite a large sum per month if you can have your gym right in the in the basement or the downstairs portion they're going to get they're going to get to it so um yeah people are really trying to find and gear towards that lifestyle that's more convenient for them and is more manageable so definitely 100 percent lifestyle is a, is a big key component to where they want to live whether they buy or they rent Right. And, you know, for you, for you, how, um, you know, how did that change your business and really, you know, kind of the knowledge that you needed to know when it came to the specific buildings in the area or what amenities were associated with those uh, rentals? Well, for myself as well, too, um, in, in the pocket that I work in, I kind of went along and, and saw what was really going on and what was being built, what kind of amenities were there. Who, what was the demographic as well in those buildings? Because, you know, some people are younger, some people are older. The demographics are changed. Um, what kind of amenities are are there, parkings included and whatnot. So I think that's important that I kind of went out there and did that. So that way I can refer properly when somebody is looking for something. Right. So, it, you know, when it comes to that, uh, you know, figuring out the what, direction the demographics going what kind of you know market research were you doing and how how were you uh you know kind of gathering all that data 
So obviously the marketing of all these buildings going up, I, you know, looked on their side. I actually went myself physically and presented myself to kind of take a tour, uh, get to know the person, the salesperson that necessarily isn't a real estate agent, but is there in the building, get to know them, get that key contact. So you have that information on hand and obviously getting, you know, on the field and doing the work yourself too helps because when you have that conversation with your client, you, you know, right off the bat. So, and then obviously you have the documentation to prove it. So I think that's kind of the route I, or the approach I took really. Yeah. If for these people that you are, uh, you know, helping get into a rental, um, I have to imagine these are going to be people that you stay very much in contact with as, you know, uh, new inventory comes on the market and they are ready to make that purchase. Yes. So, I, you know, I keep in contact with them as much as I can. I have a monthly newsletter. I keep in contact with them through text, email, even social media. I mean, now we're in that, you know, day and age where social media is always a point of contact. So having them as a friend <laughs> is always best, you know, and then when it comes to holidays, too, I always like to give them a little something. So it's that's it's always you've got to be, in, you know, in front of them and just make sure that they're being not handheld per se, but, you know, that you're just a friend there to also help them when that time comes. Yeah. And I think, you know, with the way things have gone over the past few years and, uh, instant, you know, rates are changing the inventories, you know, all over the place, you know, you're dealing with, uh, more rentals, uh, just being able to provide that information too, as well. Of, hey, this is, you know, what the, the newest interest rates are. This is what, you know, it could mean for your payments and, and things like that is super important. I think it's all exactly. I think it's important also to have that person that you can rely on that you work with that is in you know um in estate sales or also mortgages um a notary or a, a lawyer for example um that can also help you and help your clients as well so if they do have any questions to decide on anything you have those person or people to to, to really make sure that they give them the right answer so for interest rates i mean i'm always keeping up to date with my mortgage broker to ensure that i can get the best rate with the best you know um, bank. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I think those, you know, those, um, uh, professional relationships that you can build with those people, uh, and not only for the referrals that it might bring to you, but mm -hmm. also just that extra knowledge base and that extra trust that you're able to provide, you know, for your clients. Absolutely. Yeah. What, um, over the, the past couple of years, have you, um, kind of, changed or stepped up or, you know, morphed your, like you said, you know, being on social media a lot. And I've seen, you know, on your pages, you have a lot of, um, you know, they're very well built out and uh, you do share a lot of the information and what you got going on. So how have you changed over the past few years there? Um, I would say, no, I kept my strategy still the same, try to be online as much as possible. I realized going back to basics also is one way to go. I mean, so many people are now on social media that people are getting overwhelmed with the same information. I didn't want to give a repeat style of, you know, five tips to selling your home, <laughs> current market update, like everyone's kind of doing those things. And it gets quite confusing. I'd rather sit in front of that person in their home or at my office and have that conversation one-on-one -on -one, because everyone has a different um, approach to things and also has a different situation. So I'd rather be one-on-one -on -one with them. So what I do now is I kind of write to them or send them specific emails that are tailored to them. My monthly newsletter is also catered to that sort of thing. Um, using Calendly is actually a really great way to really circle through so they can easily, um, you know, book a call with me or a meeting with me and discuss some notes that they can input right away. And also I've really adapted in the sense of, you know what, people are sometimes just afraid to ask or, oh, I'll get to it later or I'll ask her later. <laughs> um, so now I've kind of built a system where I want to be able to do more webinars um, and especially for sellers because i I do know that there's going to be more inventory coming up because people will have no choice but to put their homes up for sale. So I want to be able to educate whether it is a seller or a first time seller or, or a buyer um, on the right things to do. And, and that way it'll be easier for them to just jump on a webinar and get all that information um, from the get go. Yeah. I really like that idea of, you know, the webinar is great because I, you know, I talked to so many people that used to host, you know, in-person seminars or, you know, they would go to uh, the, you know, adult learning centers in their area and give presentations on, for first time buyers, you know, and I think being able to do it online in the comfort of your home 
is fantastic. And then still having that ability to ask the questions and, uh, you know, get the real life responses is awesome. Absolutely. And I think also circling back to the professionals too is, yeah, we used to do the lunch and learns um, as well too before. And it's also letting them know, okay, you know what, let's do it again. Let's, you know, now that everything is open and we're all about, about, we can, you know, host it in a conference room and stuff like that. But what we realized is that a lot of people are still not there yet. They still like the Zoom situation. They'd rather do it at the comfort of their own home. So um, we're adapting to that too. So having these lunch and learns per se with another professional too, where you guys can both <laughs> put your resources together is also a, another way of, you know, communicating with our clients and future clients. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, the technology they have now, uh, it makes it so easy to set up a, a webinar that, you know, you can do it where people can log in and, you know, be really engaged in the chat or you can stream it out to your Facebook pages or wherever. And you have all these different sources of people uh, coming into it. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, one of the things you mentioned also is, you know, really wanting to get back to basics and making those, you know, real human connections with people. And I think that's interesting, especially in a time where AI is like the dominating word or phrase out there. Um, but, you know, there's so many great ways to use AI to allow you to have more time to make those uh, personal connections. So uh, how are you uh, doing things? I know Calendly, again, is a great tool to kind of take care of that scheduling without having to do the back and forth. Yeah, I, I'll say I'm still old school. I know some people still write their emails through um, ChatGPT, for example. <laughs> I tend to still write mine by hand. <laughs> and, and I find it gives a more personal approach because you do know when it's written by something else and not the human <laughs> version. But um, for myself, too, I know a lot of real estate agents do incorporate AI in their how they write their listing descriptions. Um, I do find it helpful to kind of maybe perhaps have a rough draft of something, but I then fine tune it myself and just um, and put my own touch on it. I really pride myself and I always have. And that's why I've gotten where I am today is, is putting that marketing touch that I have onto the listing. So I do incorporate you know, um, sometimes, <laughs> um, when it need be, or if I'm stuck or have a, you know, a mental block, but pretty much it's really to write the descriptions and more also, um, I think it's for social media. I probably would say is, is the best Avenue I use it for. Cause sometimes, you know, we can run out of things to say, <laughs> um, and so it does help in that sort of sense. And there's so many different platforms I still haven't even gone into yet that I haven't even discovered. And I've just started noticing now, but um, it, 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 is, it is something that does help. It, I've, it's putting together a PowerPoint for me. So I mean, yeah. it's a, I think that's the more, the best thing I could say is that it's more efficient for me to use these tools so I can help my clients get to like point A to point B, but um, I don't really use it too much. Right. Yeah. I think for me, uh, I use it as mainly, you know, the kind of idea gathering and yes. maybe kind of take a whole bunch of thoughts that I have and figure out kind of a way to put it together. Then I can go in and tweak it. Exactly. Exactly. Same thing with me. Yeah. What, um, so, you know, you, you told me a little bit about how the, uh, you know, the, the markets changed to where the rentals are really, be, you know, have become uh, the big thing there. Uh, what is, you know, how has your, uh, what are some other the ways that the markets changed? Maybe even uh, the landscape of the, the real estate agents that are there. Because I have to imagine that, you know, the, uh, maybe some of the agents that got in right when the height of things were really crazy, maybe they've kind of fallen off a little bit because it, it has become more difficult, uh, you know, to get listings. So how's, how's the landscape there changed in that regard? It's exactly like what you mentioned. So a lot of people have, you know, said that's, that was my last year or that was it for me. And then they'd gone on to something else. So there's that, um, people are still obviously fighting to, you know, stick to their guns and say, you know what, I'm, I'm still doing this. I'm still servicing my clients and gathering more clients. Um, so there is that it was challenging for a few brokers for sure. 
the landscape has definitely changed. I mean, we are all fighting for the same type of clientele, the new ones, especially because there's a lack of inventory. People don't know what to do. If you're going to sell for X, can you afford Y, <laughs> you know, or why change four quarters for a dollars type of thing. So it's, uh, it's quite hard. So we're all kind of fighting, but everyone has their own way of working. And I think you just have to be that person, you know, people can know, like, and trust and that they adapt with their own personality. So as much as we're out there, um, one is going to resonate with somebody. So um, that all, all that being said, I think that in this day and age, I think it's all about being authentic and just being at the forefront of everything in order to help that new person coming in, whether they want to buy or sell or even rent. So like I said before, like I myself went personally to see what was going on with the rental market in our little niche here um, to kind of understand. So that's kind of my way of delivering on the, the rental front. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's, you know, it, it's really important uh, to do the things that you did, you know, really adapt to the market conditions and adapt to what's available for your customer base. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. What, um, you know, just kind of before we wrap up, you know, what's, you know, what's this year's kind of goals for you? And then, you know, going into uh, the future years, what are your goals? Thank you um, for asking such a great question. <laughs> <laughs> Could always change, you know? Yeah. Um, no, for me, I really want to be able to educate sellers because I feel like there is going to be a lot of first time sellers that haven't sold a property in a very long mm -hmm. time. I want to be there to obviously help them as much as I can because I realize there's even if, you know, a seasoned seller who might have sold before, they forget what happens in, when you sell a property. So I want to really be there for them. Uh, I'm very organized as a person myself. So I have all the documents. I can show them exactly what I need and, and what's the best and more efficient, most efficient way to sell a property. So I want to really adapt to that type of market. So in order, so that's basically my goal there is to really kind of help sellers, especially if they're, it's their first time selling. Um, and hopefully just bring about the same, the same type of marketing I've been doing. I mean, I don't think we have to reinvent the wheel anymore. I know people are getting extravagant in order to get their property, um, you know, sold at the end of the day. Yes, we do have to find the right buyer, but as long as we keep, keep putting that, you know, main effort in and tapping into our resources and our colleagues and all that sort of thing, it, it'll get sold. So um, exactly. So just basically <laughs> catering to the, the new adapting market. So I think there is going to be an influx of new sellers out there. Um, and also, the, as I mentioned, just keep doing my marketing thing. Yeah. And I really do like the idea of the webinars and I can, I can definitely see and have seen proof that that does work. Uh, especially, you know, if you are uh, really targeting those new sellers, there are a lot of questions, you know, that come mm -hmm. up. And I think that's a great way to, to answer those questions and get your name out there as the, uh, the market expert. Yeah, absolutely. And just to, to sign off before I, I actually, what I did is I blocked myself every, um, well, every Wednesday at noon and there's a recurring webinar that can come on and everyone has kind of a QR code. So if I did any solicitations or online, um, that QR will pin you to my Wednesday webinar at noon and anyone can chime in and I'll be able to answer any questions that they have. So obviously you have to put in input your information. So I kind of know who's going to come or if I'm not going to be there if no one's attending, but it allows people to have this easy say. So it's either at noon or at night in the evening and it's just easy for them to just quickly jump on and just ask any questions they have. So instead of just booking a one-on-one, -on -one, it can be like more of a collective community situation too. So I think that was kind of an innovative idea that no one's really been doing. And I think it it could help with some people just, you know, wanting to put their feet in, but not totally get wet. <laughs> right. Yeah. And well, and the great thing about that is, um, you know, you yourself, it's, it's not taking a huge time commitment for you to get in front of those people that maybe aren't quite ready, but you're still staying on top of their mind. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Well, I really do appreciate you taking the time to, uh, to rejoin us here and kind of catch us up to what you've been up to. Well, thank you for having me again. It's always a pleasure. I really want to thank Jessica for joining us today and really like how she's adapting with her market condition and client needs. Remember, be sure to check out the episode description for links to Jessica's social channels. So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. 
Well, that wraps things up for this episode. But remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.